Good afternoon. I'm Zahir Abbas. I'm a physician associate trainee. Can I confirm your full name and date of birth, please, sir? My name is John Smith. Date of birth is 25th on the 6th, 1965. Mr. Smith, um, thank you for uh, attending the appointment today. Um, how are you feeling just before we begin? I'm feeling quite lethargic, uh, quite tired. Mm. And uh, my, bowel, my bowel movements are still quite irritable. So. Mm. Mm. I still on and off with the constipation diarrhea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, mm. fine. So um, you may recall the GP has conducted some investigations mm -hmm. uh, and they've uh, referred you for what they call a colonoscopy. Mm -hmm. uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to essentially talk to you about what exactly colonoscopy is, what to expect on the day of the procedure, how to prepare for the procedure because that's really important and what you can possibly expect afterwards. Mm -hmm. Is that okay with you? Yes. Lovely, thank you. Um, what is, have you heard of anyone having had one? Have you had one before? No, What's your understanding? No, I don't really know much about it. Okay, okay. I mean, that's actually a better place to start. Mm -hmm. So a, a colonoscope, or any scope really, essentially is a fiber optic uh, a probe, and it's got a, a camera on the end with a, a light. Um, and what we do is, in the contract of colonoscopy, we're actually going to insert that through your back passage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, um, in order to, the, the aim really is for us to be able to go inside and actually visualise your intestines and try and understand why it is that you've got the anemia that you have from, mm -hmm. uh, you know, from the blood test that, that you've, you've already been told about. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to try and get to the bottom of that and possibly even explain this, this erratic bowel motion that you've got. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Now, in, in order to, to prepare for the, um, the whole thing, there are a few things. So before I continue, I'm just going to forewarn you. It's going to be a bit of information overload. So I do apologise. I have got some information in just for you. I will bring those to you afterwards. Mm -hmm. You've got plenty of reading time in there. Everything I mentioned is absolutely stated in there. And should you have any queries, you know, afterwards, after you've read them or otherwise, don't hesitate to pick up the phone and, and mm -hmm. give us a call. Uh, I'm hoping to consent you, you know, receive your consent today as far mm -hmm. as to go ahead with the procedure. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that you know, later down the line, should you decide to change your decision, you, you absolutely can do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've not signed your life away. Okay, so um, in order to, to prepare for the actual thing, um, three days before the procedure, three days, you go on a brand-free uh, brand diet, so no roughage, no bran, no wheat, etc. in mm -hmm. the diet, okay? Mm -hmm. One day before the diet, you're going to go fluids only, literally fluids only, mm -hmm. and four hours, four hours before the diet, uh, the procedure, you're going to strictly go on meal by mouth, so you're not going to consume any foods mm -hmm. or drinks or anything, mm -hmm. okay? Um, what I'm going to do, is I'm going to uh, give you a medication. You're going to take that. There are two doses of this. It's mm -hmm. an enema, uh, which means you're going to drink it. Uh, you'll have uh, one day before the appointment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one day before the procedure, you're going to have one uh, dose in the morning and one in the afternoon. This will make you go to the laboratory. So my advice to you would be stay home on that day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, when you actually come in, uh, one of our one of my uh, my colleagues or myself, somebody will perform a corrective examination. A little bit like you had at the surgery with the GP. Um, part of the reason for that is to ensure that a, it's safe for us to go in and uh, put the probe inside, uh, but also in any fashion to check that the bowels are actually empty. We do need for them to be empty. And mm -hmm. you'll appreciate if you're going to visualise things, mm -hmm. it needs to be a, a clear way. Um, during the procedure itself, what we're going to do is we're going to sedate you. We're not going to put you to sleep. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to sedate you, which means you're going to be semi-conscious. Okay, so you'll neither be in, neither be in, out. You'll have, uh, you'll be aware of things happening. You'll be aware of us being doing the procedure, etc. But uh, you won't necessarily remember everything. The idea is just to try and make this as comfortable mm -hmm. as possible for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, if you if you feel that you're in pain and discomfort, then we'll absolutely support you. Please come and see your own anatomy mm -hmm. as well. Um, speaking of analgesia, do you have any known drug allergies? Um, no. No known drug allergies. Thank mm. you. Um, the other thing we're going to do, the, the actual, once we put the uh, place of colonoscope inside, we're going to also push some air inside the cavity. That'll open the intestines again to give us a, a clear view of mm -hmm. the intestines themselves. Mm -hmm. um, that will probably give you a sensation to feel the need to either pass wind or otherwise defecate. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely normal. And, and once the air comes out, that feeling is absolutely supine. So, mm -hmm. Now, the last thing is is uh, wrist and, and, and aftercare. Um, who do you live in that home? I just have a flat. Lovely. Lovely. So, um, on the day, yeah, 
I would probably say just get your partner to drive you in. It's about 45 minutes to an hour procedure. They can wait for you. And um, what you can do is you need to be driven home. You cannot drive or operate any machinery for 24 hours after this, this procedure mm -hmm. because of the sedation that is, okay, and, and the, the effect of the drugs. Uh, you do need uh, somebody to look after you for the next 24 hours, so your partner is probably the best place for that. Mm -hmm. uh, risks are such that there's a very small, one, less than one in a thousand people can end up with a bit of a perforated bowel. Okay, I do apologise, that risk is, is, you know, no procedure comes without its risk, uh, but it's a small risk. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely worth still the, the benefits of the procedure outweigh the risk. Mm -hmm. um, you may well experience some soreness in the area, uh, some, some, you know, feel that bruised. There's always a risk of infection. You know, a sterilised environment mm -hmm. is we're going to put a, an instrument inside your body that's otherwise uh, not part of, and so risk of infection. Um, my advice to you would be after the procedure, should you experience any um, uh, significant amount of blood in the in the uh, toilet pan, or if you extreme pain, or if you find there's a huge bruising in the area, absolutely come back into the NHS. Like I say, the, the information is on the, uh, the, the, the sheets, so what mm -hmm. I'll do is I'll give you a, a few moments just to uh, digest some of the information I've given, and I'll bring back the consent form and the, uh, the mm -hmm. information details. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, thank you. Just a few moments. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.